As a small child growing up on a farm on the west coast of Scotland, I remember the Scots pines towering above the house. They'd sway in the omnipresent breeze and occasionally be uprooted and land unnervingly close to our home. To my four siblings and I, the neat little pine cones which littered the floor of our woodland playground offer little more than convenient ammunition. We'd collect them up before battle commenced and well, we're all here to tell the tale. The Scots pine cone is the type of cone that immediately comes to mind when thinking of a cone, like a pointed ovoid with perfect spirals. My latest challenge sees me draw an inspiration from both maths and nature. Geometry in nature can be really captivating. From the patterns of petals on a flower, the shells of mollusks, and the progression of chords and music. From spirals and the formation of galaxies to the proportions of Da Vinci's Vitruvian Man. It's by no accident that Fibonacci spirals repeatedly appear in nature. Millions of years of evolution have led Mother Nature to the conclusion that numbers found in a Fibonacci sequence make for the best chance of survival. Whether it be to fit as many seeds into a given area in the case of the humble pine cone, to attract pollinators in the case of a flower, or for one leaf to avoid the shade of another. For me, abstract sculpture is often about subtraction. I tend to focus in on those characteristics which embody the essence of a form. In this case, the pine cone and its intricate spirals. Other less important subtleties may be omitted, creating a simple, pleasing form. You'll find intricately formed spirals in both clockwise and counterclockwise directions. The number of scales in the respective spirals almost always are sequential in a Fibonacci sequence. So if there's three going one way, there'll be five going the other. If there's five going one way, there'll be eight going the other, or eight and 13, 13, 21, and so on. I'm at a point now where I've already created the sculpture and it's just about to head to the foundry. This turned out to be an even greater challenge than I might have imagined. Often you see pine cones on the finials of gate pillars or that kind of thing, or carved with a chainsaw, where the spirals tend to be very diamond shaped. So a cone may have the same number of spirals going one way to the other. And that means that all these shapes tend to be quite consistent. Of course, that's not how pine cones actually are. If I went down that route, I'd be selling the pine cone short. Began by making this piece in MDF. I created all the scales which came out from the overall form. And I realized by going through that process that I didn't want to make the pine cone all about the scales coming out. And so that was a valuable experience, although it, it was a failure that cost me a lot of time and blood, sweat and tears. It helped me considerably to think about the cone in a simplified way. If rather than thinking about the cone as three different series of spirals, I simply think about it as 13 spirals in this direction and then accept that these other eight spirals going this way and the 21 scales just off the vertical are merely a product of the relative position of each of these 13 spirals to one another then that would make my life a whole lot easier. This is M330 modeling board and it's often used when you're scaling a piece up or down. Pentahedrons recede into the negative space between the spirals and they have the desired effect of bringing the spirals very much to the fore. We've just got a few uneven edges here which I'm just removing with a nail file to get as smooth as possible. They're almost too sharp and because of that they've just kind of broken away. I don't want to take them back any more than I have to because obviously I don't want to lose any form at all. There are also a few edges which have just been knocked a little while it's been moved around and these have to be absolutely perfect um, before it gets cast. You might think that those things can get sorted out later in the wax. If I miss this now, when we make a mother mold in rubber and then create the wax positive, at that point I could sort it out. And that is an option. However, it's much easier to get it right now. And then if you're casting, say, an addition of 10, we don't have to rectify each one of those wax versions. That's obviously a lot more labor intensive than just getting it right from the word go. I'm a great believer that at each point, if you can make it as good as possible, then it's a good recipe for success. So I'm going to work away at this. I'm going to move it to the foundry probably tomorrow. 
The foundry is about 45 minutes drive away. I'll go down there probably for a couple of days and work on this and get these edges just right, remove any milling marks and build up any edges that I'm not happy with. And I'm really excited to see this in the brewing. Just got these really tiny pieces to fill in. If I don't, I'm going to regret it later when I see it in brewing. So um, it's worth taking the time to see the smallest part here. I've sanded it down as much as I can and I don't want to go any further so I'm just going to fill that in. Probably quite hard to see there but what I'm going to do is just deliberately put too much on and then I can leave it for 45 minutes or so and then easily sand it back. This is just car body filler, it's a two part, two part adhesive and filler. Just been working away on these edges here, which back in the workshop they were still quite sharp. I actually expected to leave them like that and then had a change of heart once I got here. I think it does help the piece quite a lot by softening them quite a bit. And hopefully in a couple of months time we'll have this completed in the bronze and I really look forward to sharing that with you. Pinecone will be available at 750mm in height with the likelihood of larger and smaller scaled editions being available in the future. Don't forget to let me know what you think in the comments and wherever you are in the world I hope you are safe and well and I will look forward to seeing you again soon.